Hello, everybody. So good to be with you tonight. Welcome to week one of a six-week book club. Um, kind of a discussion, reflection, hopefully um, something that will help you get a deeper understanding of the book um, and help you just bounce things off of your hearts um, and just create new ideas. Um, and if you haven't read any of the book yet, that's okay, because week one is much more of an orientation, um, and you get this week to kind of start up. So I just want to talk about what we're doing. Um, so happy to be with you guys, truly. Just feeling good just starting this with you guys tonight. So um, a few things. We're here to talk about um, you via the book that I wrote with my buddy Dan, The Illusion of Money, Why Chasing Money is Stopping You from Receiving It. And this book to me is very, very, very exciting, not only in that it's here to help you find a new level of yourself, it's here to help you raise money for yourself, it's here to help you let go of things that are heavy, but one of the purposes of this book is to raise the consciousness of the planet. Um, that's a purpose that I have in my heart. And that's one of the things that I believe that I'm here to do is help people just make little two inch shifts and raise their awareness and move to a higher place of connection to themselves. And when we are not hindered, when we are not blocked, when we are not in a place of trying to, um, you know, force something to happen, we start to discover that we're just naturally connected to something that's trying to guide us. And a lot of times it can't. If you picture like those cliche things where a UFO like picks someone up, well, imagine if you're picking them up and they're also in a stagnant relationship. It starts to get heavier, right? If, they're, if the UFO is trying to pick someone up and beams down and it picks the person up and they have all this crap in the garage or a total attachment to you know a job that doesn't align for them, whatever else, it can't pick them up. Well, picture that there's a source that's trying to give you ideas, it's trying to give you possibilities, it's trying to make the universe actually form around you. And it can't if we're in a stagnant place. We're saying I'm not receptive to that. So for us to do a lot of healing on this planet, excuse me, I realize I'm sitting on something. For us to do a lot of healing on this planet, um, it starts with us. And it starts with us moving in a way that helps us to create a new space of possibility, which then raises the bar of other people's space of possibility. And... Um, helps people to move faster, to get out of things that are stagnant and to move in a guided way. So I welcome you to that because obviously the world's speeding up right now. Um, a lot of people are getting more hypersensitive and more aware uh, when they're in something or out of alignment with themselves, when they're in something that doesn't align, when they feel off, whatever. And this book is here to be permission for you. And when you connect to that thing, weirdly, you'll start to realize you are the source of your abundance, not the money is. And that's one of the biggest points of this book. You know, we've been raised that money is so many things, the answer to our problems, the root of all evil, you know, freedom, money is freedom, money equals security, so many different things. And just in saying that, we're saying you are not security. You are not freedom. And uh, I just just want to offer you the possibility that what if you realize you are freedom and what if we move as if that's the case? So that's what this is about. So a few things. If you haven't seen it, there's also a documentary that you can have with the book. You have the option of either getting it for free or donating and it going to, you know, the profits from that going to charity. Um, so there is a link uh, under me right now that's green link that if you haven't seen it this week, feel free to watch the Illusion of Money documentary. Now, the documentary is very different than the book. There's some similarities, but there's a lot of different points in the documentary. And the book is much more specific and much more helpful as far as you're concerned. So I just want to offer you for this week, 
make sure that you see the documentary. And if you've seen it, awesome. And if you haven't, make sure you see it. And then also this week, you're going to read chapters, introduction. Of course, Dr. Shafali's amazing forward. She's so much more articulate than I am. It's just like this incredible forward. And then I come on and talk about mustache lengths right off the bat. But there's her forward, the introduction, and then also check out chapter one and chapter two. And those are what you're going to read this week. Um, and we're going to talk about what came up for you when you did it. One of the purposes I have for this book club, you guys, is for you to share crazy, crazy stories of things that are happening to you as you do the surrender work. Because really, it's a real thing. When you actually surrender, first of all, not even necessarily on just a magical scale, you train your mind and your eyes to look for possibilities. Most of us are addicted to looking for problems, looking for things to get out of, looking for ways to fix things that we're stuck in. And my offer to you is to learn to look for possibilities, which you do when you do the work and you surrender. So I'm excited to hear stories. I've already seen some people writing on the Absolutely Everything Pass, uh, different stories of, so I got the illusion of money, I surrendered, and then this random thing showed up, or I found this on the ground, or whatever. And, you know, or people that found out when they let go of something that was heavy, that they found new places of possibility. That's one of the things that happens like think about just from a tangible obvious place that if you're in a situation you don't want to be in the only thing you're doing is either thinking about what it would be like to get out which means you're saying i'm not where i want to be so energetically you're in an argument with yourself or figuring out what life would be like without it or figuring out what you should do about this thing. And you're constantly in your head. If you're in something you don't wanna be in, it forces you to be in your head. When you're in something you want to be in, it forces you to be in your heart. So we're here to be in our heart. Life wanted us in our heart, but we have so many things we're holding on to that we ignore our heart and we have to make sense out of what to do about it or why we're in our you know situation or why we're ignoring our heart so your mind kicks in so if you're in your head right that's a sign that you're just holding on to something you don't want and the universe responds to what you do not what you say the universe and life responds to what you do so no matter how much you're telling everybody else about the universe no matter how much you're declaring what you're going to do which is future which you're doing from your head by the way even declaring stuff in the future at some level is you creating a fix to the fact that you're in your head and you're in your head because you're holding on to something you do not want to be holding on to right so you can already tell if you're in your head all day something in your life is in the way of that right and you're scared to let go of it and that's what your declaration is is fear so the universe sees fear and it goes here's more problems to be scared of because that's what you're asking for so the offer is to see what happens when we actually step out of the thing when we actually step into the thing that we want that's the 10 when we actually clear out the old thing right so i'm excited to hear your stories because you based on what you do are making declarations to a new possible life and there's so many things going on in the world right now that are getting crazier and crazier and crazier and it's because the collective is all holding on to the old baggage their old story their old whatever and what we need are people to free themselves now, to become the epitome of source by moving in the I don't knowness, but by moving in the feeling. Are you with me so so far? So the way you move is based on the feeling versus the pros and cons list of what will happen. And a thing that's happened for me for quite a while now is just asking myself and, and often I ignore it and life gives me, I'm gonna kick your ass because you're ignoring it. But just moments where you just can feel within one second, 
is stepping out of this or stepping into this, it frees me, but it scares the shit out of me. It frees me, but I'm scared too. I don't know what'll happen. It frees me, but I can't see what it'll be like, but it frees me, right? That's moving into your heart and you will go into an I don't know. Now, most of us do everything based on how something looks on paper, which means not in my heart. So you're immediately cut off from life when you do something based on what looks good on paper, but not in your heart. You could have something that feels so good in your heart, but looks horrible on paper. And still, if you follow the heart, even if it looks horrible on paper, what happens is the stuff on paper will take care of itself because you're proving to yourself your feeling in the moment is tangible and awesome and something that you actually are. So we're here to move forward based on the feeling. The feeling. What does it feel like? That feeling of out there, if I did that, oh, I don't know what it would be like. Yes. And you're trying to analyze it from in your head. But what do you think you're doing when you, when you, when you surrender what your head is saying and move towards that feeling? What do you think you're doing? You're saying, I want to connect to my body. And when I'm fully connected to my body, I will understand everything after that. I'll understand. And I'm going to feel again, really big. I'm going to feel really fully. I'm going to feel freedom, right? So when we make that move and we don't understand what it is, yeah, it's scary. But we don't realize the way we've been living in our head is scarier. We're just used to it. Just because we've done it a while doesn't mean it's not scarier. Living in your head, you can do your whole life, but you don't realize how scary that is. Like you're scared if you go live in your heart, you're going to go broke. Meanwhile, in your head, you're broke, right? So the old way wasn't working anyway, right? So there's things that call to us. Now, what you don't know is when you say yes to the thing, not only is life going to mirror your surrender, not only are you gonna learn how to fly, not only is crap around you going to start formulating around the move that you made, it will. Because you're gonna see things differently. You're seeing the synchronicities and things. But you're raising the collective water level of the consciousness of the world. You're raising the bar, you're raising, <sighs> You're speeding it up. You're forcing other people to move into their integrity faster and faster and faster too, right? So that's what we're here to do is move into our heart and a dog barking. That's what we're here to do. So what, what calls to you when I say that? What expands you? What do you feel in your body? What do you feel in your body? Do you have a specific thing that's showing up in your heart that you want to do? Do you have a specific thing that goes, what if I did? It's just screaming at you. Do you have a specific thing that says, you know, no more of this, whatever. Donate it all to the goodwill. Sell the house, buy the house, rent the place, you know, move, move forward, whatever it is. The way the universe works, I find, through many, many leaps, is that it gives you it says, just follow this one thing. Stop looking at the long term, right? Stop looking at the long term. Just, just do the one thing, right? So our usual argument is between the next step and the long term, okay? That's the usual argument. So like for instance, what if I leave this job? Well, in the long term, I will get a raise. Okay, your declaration is to the future, which is in your head, if you stay. Do you see that? Your declaration is to the future, which is in your head. Your declaration is to the future. But the body goes now, because that's the only thing that exists. So when you do the thing that's the one thing forward, you start to move with the flow of the moment. Now, before you leap, most people around you 
are in their head. So you're going to look nuts to most people. But once you do it, you start to find people who are only in their heart, right? Because you're now in your heart. So the people that are in their heads suddenly start to look different to you and they don't feel like they can see you fully. So then you find people who are in their heart, you just start looking differently, right? Because now you don't see yourself as the unworthy person. You see yourself as the one that leapt forward. So now the people that are in their head who were keeping you in there, now those people, am I, is it unfrozen? Is it working? Okay. Awesome. So at first, at first, when you're in your head, you see the people who are going to judge you because you're also in your head. So they really matter to you. When you go into your heart, all of a sudden the people in your in their head look very different to you. You're like, wow, they're all stuck. And you understand that your leap freed you of that, right? Then from the free place in your heart, you suddenly energetically feel your body, you start to go, I can't believe I delayed this feeling, right? I can't believe that I stalled this out. I can't believe it. You start to, you start to go, I wasted all that time. And then you go, but it's not bad. You're not guilty about it, but you start to see how free you were. You could not see all of that from in your head. Then you're free and you're in your body. And here we are expanded and in our body. Amazing then you start only seeing the people who are in their body. And you won't, you'll be shocked at how much they're all around you, but you can't see them when you're in your head. You could sit on a plane next to someone who's totally in their heart. And if you're in your, your head, you'll see like they have it better than you. You'll see they understand things I don't. Why don't I ever get it? If you're in your heart and you sit next to that exact same person, you start to go, this person sees me. This person understands. This person's the real thing. So when you're in your head, you only are scared of what other people will think. Once you leap, they just look totally like they don't understand and you're like, fine. Then you're in your heart. Now you're only around people who are in their heart. What do you think life is like if you're in your heart and the only people that are, you're around are in their heart? Now you lose some things that we were taught to learn, but you don't have to have anymore. One of the things you will lose is competition. When you're in your heart and the person you're with is in their heart, you guys know that one plus one equals infinity. Everything works when you're in your heart and the person you're with is in their heart. So they start to move from out of competition and you start to move into contribution. So they're more excited about contributing to someone who's also in their heart. The more you're in your heart, the more you can see through things and the, the don't align and the people that are in their head. So you stop, you, you can be there for them, but you understand that your heartness is here to be protected and that it's its own thing and that you're in your body and you're going to connect with other people who are in that. You will soar and everything becomes oneness when you're in that alignment. From that place, you don't understand this from your head, but from that place, you won't believe how receptive and abundant you feel to everything. When you feel abundant in your body fully, life has to mirror that abundance with abundance. Now, you cannot understand what I'm talking about from in your head. So if that doesn't make sense to you, that's a sign right now that you're holding on to things that don't align with you, right? If what I said just sounds like crazy talk, you're trying to understand what I just said from my body through the filter of your mind. Once you get to a place where you feel the abundance of this moment, that you're enough in this moment, that you're just love right now, truly, you stop needing to see money as your survival because you start to see yourself as your survival. The match to that is life goes, here's more abundance. Here's heart-centered people. Here's co-creative people. Here's new ideas. Now that you're not trying to figure out what to do about your situation that's stagnant, here's you as an artist. Here's you as an author. Here's you just living in the moment. Here's you in a much smaller place and your rent just got cheaper. Here's you without your addictions because you're so happy that you don't have to spend your money on a bunch of overwhelming, you know, crap, pills, food that's not helping you. 
Can you feel the difference? You become truly in your nervous system, in your body, your source of happiness. And when you are in your source of happiness, the bliss that you feel outweighs all of your old nervous system crap. The bliss that you feel in this moment outweighs it and you start to become God consciousness. You start to become the consciousness of this moment. What to do in the past and the future gets quieter and quieter. It doesn't bug your nervous system so much. You start to actually be here. You start to actually be in the moment. You start to become what you're speaking about. You start to become the declaration. And weirdly from this place, you stop needing other people to see it so addictively, but they start to ironically see it. So as you, as you see and you start realizing that you are co-creating with the universe in this moment, in this moment right now, and it's based on what you do, not what other people do. When you're in your head, you want other people to change. You want other people to shift. You want, you want your spouse to get it. You want your parents to get it. You want the world to get it, right? Why don't, and that's when you find you're saying about, why don't people get this? And why don't they vote for this person? And why does the world blah, blah, blah? You're not playing the game with the universe right now what you're doing is trying to change the outside. If you've ever played blackjack in Vegas or in Atlantic City or whatever at a casino, the way blackjack works is even though there's seven, eight people at the table, the game is between you and the dealer, right? It doesn't matter what the person next to you does. You're playing against the dealer or with the dealer. It's that way with the universe. Your universe will mirror your leaps. Do you get what I'm saying? Your universe will mirror your leaps. So, and the universe is looking at you going, do you want to hit or stay? And you're looking at the person next to you going, why won't you just hit? They have nothing to do with you. You don't need to give a crap about what they're doing, right? Your game is with the universe right now. Just so you know, a fan's not on. I just have that Michael Jackson thing with my hair. It just, it's just really short hair. Ha! pretty mediocre. So the universe is looking at you going hit or stay. And most people are looking at everyone else at the table going, why don't you guys get what you're supposed to do? Right? Why doesn't the world, oh, I'm so triggered by the world right now. Why? You're not here to focus on what the world's doing. And what if you found out that the other people at the table were actually a mirror of how you play blackjack? What if you found out that actually, weirdly, the more you win, the more other people see the evidence of winning, the consciousness of winning becomes more normal and the other people start to win. But if you're in your stagnancy and you're telling everyone else to hit, you're telling everyone else to do all this crap, why don't you get it? I'm gonna coach you to get it. You're gonna do this. Everyone's gotta change around me. You're gonna get the mirror of you suffering because they're not doing it they will become the mirror of your suffering because you're not playing directly with the universe. So every moment, the universe is going hit or stay. And hit could be leaping. And most of us have stayed our entire life and we don't understand you're sitting here with seven and the dealer's trying to get you to 21. Do you wanna hit? Oh, I've been staying my entire life. My mom taught me to stay. Do you wanna hit? You have seven. You can't bust if you hit right now. Hit, and you're sitting here like, oh, my dad told me if I hit that I'll never amount to anything. My dad told me hitting's the root of all evil. And you're just like, the universe is like, for Christ. Do you... Okay, and you're like, why isn't everyone else hitting? Why aren't you all hitting? Universe is asking you over and over and over every moment. You want, okay, you're staying? All right, stay, all right. He's staying with seven, weird. And then he flips his over and it's like 16 and he won. But you could have at least taken it higher, right? You're sitting here with seven. So you are playing based on not what you say, but what you do. And you know why so many people are posting memes on their Facebook? So many people, and I do too, we all post the memes and oh, someone else said that's a great insight because it's calling to you and we're not living it right? The way the universe works is when you live it. When you live it, you really don't need to share the memes as much. When you live it, you start becoming the embodiment of it. 
So you don't need other people to do it and you'll be shocked at how fast they do it. Same thing works with money. When you stop needing money because you become the abundance yourself, you have to create you have to be, you're more valuable. You're more confident. You don't need that job as much. So suddenly they're going to offer you a raise. They're going to offer you a bigger job. They're going to want you to be bigger things because you don't need the thing. And the more you connect to yourself, the more you hit when you have seven, you start getting 21, 21, 21, 21. And life is like jackpot, blackjack, 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 because of how you're playing the game. And the universe is asking you to play the game and follow your highest. Now, when I say your highest, I mean your highest in insight, not my highest for you. Because a lot of people, when they change, they go, well, the public says this and teachers say this. So this teacher leapt this way, so I should do it. And the amount of people that were like suddenly quitting jobs to write books or, or rent theaters or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that was your calling, right? That's just going, I'm going to switch who I'm learning from outside of me, right? So my offer to you is ask yourself what your calling is. And it's those little subtle moments that go, what if I, that moment, what if I, it shows up on its own. It has to show up on its own. And if you can't find it on your own, that's because you're living so stagnantly that you can't see anything outside of your stagnancy. So we're always thinking something. Is what you're thinking about your circumstance that you're trying to fix over and 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 over again? Is your circumstance the thing that's in your mind? This what do we do about? What do we do about? So you're in a place of fight or flight and you can't get to the guidance of what you are because you keep thinking about your circumstance over and over and over. So what we have to do is get out of our circumstance. Now, I'm seeing that some of you are saying that it's frozen. Is it frozen for everybody or is it just, is, it, is anyone I'm not frozen for? Because it's so, I'm okay, okay. So if remember, remember if you're frozen, there's a lot of people on right now. If it's frozen, my offer to you is, okay, a ton of people say it's not. So if a lot of people say it's not, that means the factor of the freezing is your computer, right? Just like life, it's your computer, right? So we think, oh, it's frozen out there. No, 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 hit your computer, not everyone else's computer. Even that's an analogy, you guys. <sighs> so what happens when we stop hindering ourselves? And what happens when we hit when it's time to hit? What happens when we leap and we stop focusing on everyone else? What happens? You get this direct connection to guidance. You get a direct connection to creativity. You get a direct connection to calling. You get a direct connection to happiness. You get a direct connection to joy and funny and play. That is your normal right. And you will discover that the way you see dire circumstances in your life move to funny or okay from a different consciousness that's available to you now. So you could literally hear something that sounds like horrifying news and be in one state and hear it as life or death and be in another state and hear it as fine. It'll be fine. The factor is the consciousness that you're living in. Now, I'll tell you something really interesting. The more scared you are to leap, the more aware you are. <laughs> right? The more you have the nerves, the more you have the fear, the more awareness you actually are and the farther away you are from it. So your fear is how great it's going to be. Your fear is how big the love is going to be that's going to wipe out the old identity that you used to be that you got love for being. You're scared to lose your connection to your parents because who you actually are might not need to be who you became to not be abandoned by a father or a mother, right? So there's different people for the real you than the addictive you, right? There's different, there's different jobs, there's different careers, there's different things for the real you versus the story that you created that you are, right? So, that's what is available to you. And weirdly, people think this is just about money, but this is about what you are. And in 2019, 
we're moving into fall of 2019. We have got to go this way. Otherwise, we're going to be in so much more pain. You're going to notice that if you're reading this book or you're hearing me talk, you're someone who has a big, wide open, empathetic heart. And you might notice that it's getting more and more sensitive, that it's getting more and more edgy and painful. And your awareness is getting so high that if you go off course for just a few minutes, you suddenly need to drop everything and sleep. You got to relax. You can't overwork anymore, right? You, it's hard to do, right? So what is that? Someone just said 5D is calling you. That's exactly right. And we were talking about this on the Wednesday night. We do our absolutely everything pass. If you're, if you're someone who does not have it, know that we have our absolutely everything pass. And I do calls like this every Wednesday and answer questions. And it's so, so, so awesome. But what's going on? If you're feeling all of this open heartedness and all this pain at the same time, you're moving into a higher dimension. Your body has been blown open to a place of oneness and your pain is that you're living in the past smaller addictive dimension, okay? So if you're actually getting sensitive and more open to the, the creativity flow magic of what you are, but you're scared to lose the old habits that you use to survive, right? You're scared to lose the, the, the connection that you felt to a parent or even the, the avoidance of a parent when you were a kid, whatever. You're scared to lose that because that's what you think you are. You're going to notice more and more pain because you can't help that your body is getting more and more receptive to this moment. So in this place right now, if we don't honor it, we are going to really quickly suffer so much more loudly. So to give you a really obvious measurable example of that, imagine if you learned how third grade works through your parents, you only found friends through third grade you, but you're actually a college student. You're actually genius and you're really deeply, how tired are you of third grade? right? How tired of you, how tired of third grade are you, especially if you've been living in third grade for 20 years and your body is blown open to that you're a college senior. Like you're, you're going to suffer because you're not moving forward with, with what you are. And that's where our suffering comes from. We're not moving forward with what we actually are. We're moving forward with the habit of what we used to be. So you're constantly in an argument of what your body can't help but tell you. And your body will tell you over and over and over and over and over and over again. And that's why we're so exhausted. And if you are following my work, that means you have something in you that says life is more than just what society taught me. The news is teaching you third grade over and over and over again. Most conversations on Facebook are third grade over and over and over again. Most of the world is here for third grade and your soul is going, I'm a college student, but you're scared to leave it because the whole world looks like third grade. But you'll see college student world when you leave third grade. All of a sudden, you just don't even have any interest in the news. You don't have an interest in the addictive patterns. You don't have an, you, you just don't see it. If you've never smoked your entire life, cigarettes don't make sense to you, right? If you've never drank your entire life, drink, it's like that's a thing over there that they do, right? That's what happens when you change channels to the college thing. So this next week, you're going to watch the movie. And this next week, I'm going to dare you to read the introduction, chapter one and chapter two. And the biggest thing that I need to offer you to do is to actually do the exercises. Really, really, really do them. The longer you do them, if you go past the time I recommend and do them even deeper, you are going to get so much more out of it. So you get back what you put into it, okay? Remember, I've used this analogy so much, but this book would be like going to the gym and having them explain to you a treadmill. It's going to be very specific, very awesome. And then we have to get on the treadmill, right? So instead of just repeating the content or telling someone else the content that you learned, we got to learn what you learn inside. Remember, an insight happens from the inside. 
So everything you read here will be my insights, but for you, it will be an outsight, right? Because you're hearing it from the outside. So there's gonna be an exercise like meditate about this for a while or let go of this or, or feel this or, or surrender or do something into a mirror or cry about this thing or whatever. And if you don't do it, then you're just going to have your mind full of this information, which is a different version of having it full of just the news or whatever, it's external information. When you do each chapter, there's an exercise at the end of each chapter. And it's maybe a paragraph and it says to do this. My dare to you is to do it. It'll say, write this down. When you do, you're going to have your own insights and this will make you a magical being, right? You will have your own insights. We need you to have your own insights. We don't need to just pass everyone else's Facebook meme around. We need you, the over 1300 people that are on this call to be your own leaders your own leaders. There's a level where you can follow and there's a level where we need you to lead. I know that thousands of people followed Martin Luther King when he did his amazing speech and we all followed it and it created major change. But now imagine thousands of Martin Luther Kings. Think of the difference between Martin Luther King and followers versus thousands of Martin Luther Kings. I need you in your Martin Luther King or your Gandhi or your Oprah, right? That's how we're going to create shift, but I'm begging you to actually do the work. And if 50 of you actually do the work this week, you're going to see results, you're going to see really weird magical stuff, but you're also going to really quickly raise the collective consciousness and you're going to see the world get better as you get better. You will swear in the stagnant place that the world's getting worse, but when you start leaping, you will see evidence that the world's getting better. No matter how much you see what they're doing, what's going on, you know a crash is coming or whatever the conspiracy theory is you got going on, I get it. But from this consciousness, you start to see the other side of that. You start to see from the 5D dimension. You start to understand that yes, the world is trying to fall apart to make room for the real world. It's trying to take your old control structures down. It's trying to remove your fear. It's trying to take you out of fight or flight. And it's trying to move us into a world we've never experienced before where we are so much more aware that we're all connected and we're all love. And it's doing what it can to demolish what you are no longer to make room for what you are. And I promise you, when you're in alignment with what you are, you'll be totally safe. You will be magically safe, right? You will be here, you will be fine. We're so scared to be safe. It's almost like we're addicted to being in fear and in pain. It's, it's bizarre, we're addicted to it just because we've done it for so long. Well, I promise if you spent your whole life in the safety of the natural evolution of what you are, you wouldn't want to go back into fear. So that's where we are right now. Life is trying to do that. And I promise you, if 50 of you out of the over 1,357 people that are on the call, it's 1,357. If I said over, that means it's 1,358. That'd be weird if it was 1,600 people and I said out of over 100, 1,357. If even 50 of you did it, the collective change that would happen so fast would be so crazy. But I want to offer you to not even worry about what anyone else does. And still, even though other people will do it, move as if this is your game with the universe. It's you playing blackjack and it will mirror you. So even though you know other people will do it, even though it will create a collective consciousness, don't just think, well, everyone else is doing it. So I'll do it half ass. Really imagine it's down to just you and the universe. Are you with me so far? That it's just you. And start to kind of live in this, you know, Da Vinci code, what's that mean thing, where you start to see signs and, and see things as possibilities and, and notice magical things and you're in surrender, right? It's fun to be in surrender. It is, it's gonna be there. You're gonna go through a morning period. You're gonna go through morning. When you go into surrender, the first thing that God level consciousness does, the first thing that it does is it goes, we gotta clear out what you're not. So you might cry right away and you might release the attachment to mom or the, the lack of attachment or the avoidance of dad, right? And you'll cry out the old story and the old identity. It, the first thing the universe will do is purge what you're not. It's going to throw out what you're not. 
Ah, and you will be right here. How exciting is this, you guys? So we have five more weeks of this magical book club Okay, so this is just the orientation. This is just the magic. Andrea Heath just said a lot of crying. Now I wanna offer you to really make use of the crying by moving into the higher dimension. In other words, if you like what I'm saying, you feel stagnant and you cry out the old you, but then stay in the stagnant situation, it's almost like eating poison, throwing it up, and instead of like eating healthy, you eat more poison again. So you're gonna keep crying out the same damn thing right? But if you cry it out because you're moving to the college grade, yeah, you're saying goodbye to third grade, but you're now living in college. So there's a difference between just crying it out and then staying in it versus crying it out because it no longer serves you because you're moving into the higher grade, right? So that's what we're moving into. That's what we're moving into. And this is going to be the most exciting time of your life because you are going to notice not just teachings that you hear, but signs and play the game with the universe. What does that mean? What is this? Okay, I'm following it. And it's just, it's very simple. It's so simple, our minds can't handle it. It just goes, that feels lighter and better. Go. That feels freer. Go. But I can't see what I'll, go. Do it. So this book will help you through all that. This book will help you through all that. So we'll do this, you'll do that this week, and then we'll answer questions, riff on each set of chapters and whatever else. So I see there's some questions here and I got 15 minutes left. We're gonna make this a good, awesome, solid hour call so you guys can have time to go read, go do this and um, you know get the most out of it and have your own insights. You're, it's time for you to move to your own insights along with this. Like, we're gonna take the training wheels off and you get to give yourself your own insights and move with the universe. <sighs> so ask a question. Deborah asked the question, hi Kyle. Sometimes I feel unsure between what is coming up, coming from my higher self or intuition versus what is coming from conditioned habits and programming. Awesome. Do you have any trick or tool to help you distinguish the difference? Yes. So first of all, what I'm hearing Deborah, this might seem really weird, but both of them are in your head. So in other words, you might have what you think is an insight, but a lot of times if you're looking at two different ways to go and you swear this one's your heart, if you're looking at it from this third you, that often means that each way is one seems like it's more from your heart, but it's still not. If you have a dilemma or the way that I see it is when I have a dilemma, do I go this way or this way? The truth is I'm in my head both ways. So a third way is trying to show up a new way, and it might be sit with this. It might be neither way is the way, right? So, so it might be like neither way is the way, and a third way is trying to unfold. So when you feel a dilemma, wait. When you feel a dilemma, don't do anything. When you feel I don't know, chill for a minute. It's trying to get you to learn something that's beyond the dilemma of the two ways. Okay, so it might be like both ways aren't it. It might be like I need to relax. It might be whatever. Now, Sarah just said one feels like contraction and one feels expansive and that's totally true. <sighs> so if you do have that dilemma, one feels when you actually have it, one feels very obviously contracting and the other one feels freeing but it's really scary. So one, one way that it's scary is you'll notice a combination when it's the real way to go. In my eyes, it feels both expansive, peaceful. It feels expansive, peaceful, scary, and exciting all the same time. But the things like scary and exciting are quieter than, than the calmness. I can see basically that this would move me into more of what I am. And also a way that I know it's the way is I can't see what'll happen if I do it. Often I can't see what it'll look like. To do that would be the death of the way that I see things. So I can't measure what will happen if I move into this, right? But I can feel what if, I can feel I've never gone to that place. I can feel I've never said that to that person. I can feel I've never just said no, but the guidance will show up. So I see you're all asking me to show you my shirt. And the shirt says, the shirt says, um, data corn. The way, you know how Yuna rhymes with dad? 
Well, that's what it is. So the first thing to know is if it feels like both ways energetically feel kind of like doing versus surrender, that's they're both not the way. That's what I find for me. Remember, my answer is for me. What's really amazing about this world is you all have your own surreal unfolding. So the advice I can give really truly is only for me, right? Data coin. It's only for me. I can only give you the advice for me, but you have your own unfolding trying to teach you something. And there's an infinite amount of lessons that are going to come through you in your way. And when you do something that's a leap that moves beyond just the mind seeing what'll happen, but it rewires your nervous system, you start to embody whatever the teaching is. You start to understand it all the way. You can talk about it for hours on end, apparently, once you actually shift into what you are right? Once you actually shift into it and embody it versus fantasizing about it and posting the Facebook memes that tell everyone else they should do that. That's the difference, right? Sometimes I post Facebook memes that really align with what I did. But I find that the, the more I'm talking or saying what people should do, I'm calling myself out. I'm saying I want to do it, right? And so are we all. Because when you're in it, you don't care. Like none of us are screaming to literal first graders, you gotta get to second grade. It doesn't register with us because we're all not literally first graders, right? We are screaming on what we want to do. So notice when you give someone advice, what you need to learn from your own advice. You're very passionate about what you need to do, but you're scared because you're gonna be talking through your emotions and your emotions are gonna come up with what not. So listen to when you give someone else advice because you're not feeling their emotions and your ability to hear what you need to say comes through very clearly when you're talking to someone else, right? So uh, Super Weatherby says, I'm assuming that's your real name. Uh, oh, I so needed to hear this tonight. I'm in the process of changing my business to better reflect where my heart and calling is. And there is no moolah coming in right now, correct? I already can feel why, but the bills keep coming. How do I ignore the wolf at the door? By not focusing on the business right now, by focusing on you only. Instead of trying to change the business, you're calling yourself to change you. And I can feel energetically just from the first sentence that the business is not your 10. Right now, there's a you. So you said, I want to change the business to match what my heart and calling are saying. Instead, listen to what your heart and calling are saying. It might want you to drop the business. It might turn out that the business that you have going is too heavy. It might turn out that if you just change the business, you're still going to try to keep a lot of the business the way it is, and it can't quite be a 10. It'd be like me trying to change being a stand-up comedian versus learning it's time for me to completely surrender being a, a stand-up comedian. So it might be asking you to, to, to actually release the business. Now you immediately see that and go, well, what would I do to make money? Exactly. That's where we learn about what you are. And maybe money is trying to come at you a different way. You know, one thing I realized recently that was so interesting is I can see people who are naturally entrepreneurs. And I see other people who are naturally incredible supporters. It's almost like some people are doctors and some people are nurses, right? And there's a lot of times where a nurse stands next to the doctor and supports the doctor, but both are equally important. The doctor's nothing without that nurse. In fact, a lot of times the nurse takes on even more of the work, right? So there's some people that might not realize that they're naturally more supporters. I have a friend who's a birth assistant and is an amazing supporter, but entrepreneurship and a business doesn't call to her. And I know other people who've been supporting, but entrepreneurship or creating their own business or writing their own books calls to them. So one of the things that might be happening is that people who are supporters are trying to figure out how to make money directly, right? And they're doing what they can to create a business, but really they like to be there to help other people who are naturally good at businesses or vice versa. And what we don't understand is that space is more valuable than we understand. So most of us are trying to do the work of making the money ourselves when we don't understand that there's help that needs to be happening, that there's there's we need supporters and that supporters are naturally that, but they might be doing entrepreneurship and it's not their thing. So. I don't know if Super Weatherby, uh, if that 
aligns for you or if there's something in that, but it might not be a 10 for you to be creating this exact business. It might be, but that's what shows up for me as a possibility. What do people, what do you guys think of that? Right? Like, like, does that bring up something for you? Like, is there something in your body that feels a knowing suddenly from that? And it might not fit to Super Weatherby, but it might fit for many of you guys, right? What are you naturally? Now, I know we all can be both of those things. I'm not saying, so you're a supporter, or you're a whatever. But man, if we really understand that it actually feels like I like to, to, to you know, do this thing for someone else or find people who are in that mission and be that space for them more or vice versa, that's a big thing. But we all do both of them. But what we're trying to do is get universally aligned, you guys. Universally aligned with, you can't help it, this is what you are. You can't help what you want. You can't help the desires that show up in your body. You can't help it. So every time it shows up, if you don't follow it, you're in an argument with the natural flow of what you are. So as I say this, it's just here to help you find little ways to give yourself permission to just be what you can't help that you are. Like a lot of us are like, we're one person trying to be a different person because we were taught that's what we are. And meanwhile, that's what your parents might've been taught they are or school taught you you're supposed to be. What are you? And that might require some meditation. That's all gonna help you. That'll be in the book, right? Allison Schlitz says, I'm a creator leader. Totally you are. You so are. I, I would agree with that. I know Allison. She comes to my flow. She went to flow group and is on the absolutely everything calls and is just also a very dear friend. So yeah, absolutely. I would say that. And then Mary Fast came through on here and she's someone who I know who's a client and friend and does my headshots and is amazing. Who... She, I think she said she's a supporter, right, Mary? Like she, she is a supporter. Like she's, but she had been moving like, uh, you know, self leader for a while, right? So she had been fighting certain things in the government and and doing this thing. But she realized deep down she's a lover naturally, and a higher change will happen. And she might notice more change happening in the world if she steps into her supporter, her lover, her softness versus marching at the Capitol and trying to change the laws, she actually in a higher vibration could become more like a Mr. Rogers creating a support and a love that could heal the people who are doing the unjust things versus fighting them. And she came to Flow Group and we learned that and it moved her so quickly into a place of surrender and happiness and tons of crying because she's such a natural feeler and supporter. And she let go of the old taught story that she's a fighter and had to fight from her childhood and stuff. It was the most amazing thing. So she just naturally is a supporter. And when she stepped into her supporter immediately, like I wanted to work with her even more. And I feel her as one of the most softest, amazing people I've ever met. And I find myself better at what I do after I hang out with, with Mary, because I'm such a leader that when I have a supporter, I feel like I'm way better. So I want to pay Mary to like take headshots of me because she makes me feel like I look good and I'm better at that. And when I do that, I it's do you see how this all fits? How we all need each other? How, what are you just, and it could be all of these things, but you could be many of the things, but some of us just are in pain because we're not being what we are, right? So one of the things this book is here to do is help you find the natural connection to what you are and take in the fact that you can't help it. You can't help what you desire. Like maybe you have a desire, deep down soul desire for something in relationships that's not common or, or something in a, in a career that's never happened before. And then you undo yourself from the natural essence of what you are by doing what you think you should do. Now you're disconnected from yourself and that's dangerous to the world. We're moving to a place where we have to be in alignment with ourselves. We have to be in a new world where we are in source and soul with the natural flow of what we are. And we can't help it. We can't help what we are. So we're just going to go, I surrender. I'm this. I'm in this moment. I'm this way. And I read something today that was so good too. Make what you are not a noun, but a verb. Like instead of saying, I'm a writer, say I write, 
right? Feel the difference because one can label you and one you can do anywhere. So you can always move and learn the new thing you are because you might graduate from the natural flow of what you were one way and go into the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, right? So instead of saying, I'm this, I'm a baker, you know, I bake, but now I'm not stuck in that prison of that's my identity. I mother, I father, I, I am a mother or a father, but like, make sure you don't just say, I'm only that right? I'm creative versus I'm a creator. Like everything is here to just free you and you get to bring what you do into anything versus trap yourself in one label, right? <sighs> so I support even, I lead, right? I self-lead, I play. Words like that. What do I do? I flow, I play, I love, I heal, I extrovert, right? This just healed me because I'm talking to you guys. And a lot of you are, are co-leaders who are inspired and a lot of you are spaces who held space for me while I just did this, right? So I hope you guys feel something a little closer to your body and know that we got, this is totally free. I mean, just all you need is the book. To answer your question, yes, the Audible is on the way, the Audible version of it. I read the Audible. And Dr. Shafali's Forward is read by Matt Kahn on the Audible, which is just our way of playing and having fun. But that is on the way. I do not have a date when it comes out. I feel like it should be this next week. Um, but I want to offer you to also know that the book and the Audible are slightly different. The documentary is different. And I want to offer you to really take some time and read so you hear this through your mind, not just my voice. The Audible is awesome. I'm going to do what I can to leave it up to your imagination. But there's nothing like actually reading the words on a book and like hearing it go through your body in that space of silence versus having me read it to you while you're in the car. Right? I care more about how you receive you versus how you receive me. And this book is really designed for you to receive you. I'm trying so hard to go, you, 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 you are a Martin Luther King, an Oprah, a Mr. Rogers, a Mary Fast, a Chantel Rogers, an Allison Schlitt, a Mary Wolf, a Judy Keating. <sighs> you're your, and you just say your name. You are a that, right? So let's take a deep breath together and know that we're about to start a freaking five more week book club. And it's going to start, you know, with the actual chapters next week. So what is that? Um, so what's this, the 15th? So I guess at the same time next week. So I guess next Sunday. So it'd be September 22nd, 5 p.m. Pacific. We're going to do a book club together and I will read many more of your questions. This was an introduction. I am a Brene Brown, says Andrea, but I just want you to know I'm really excited to see change, to create change, to be change with you, and we're going to find a lot more of ourselves in this process. So I just wanna take a second and say thank you for being with me tonight. To Jody Evans, to Tanya, to Kara, to Colleen, to Jonathan, to Dr. Dre, to Julie, to all of you. And by the way, if you don't have it, check out the Absolutely Everything Pass. That's something that we have that has all the Wednesday night calls. You can join in a, in a much more intimate group, ask a lot of questions. Everyone supports each other on it. If you don't have it, grab it. There's all of our old content on there, all of our, you got all the seminars, the things we used to sell for thousands of dollars, it's all on there and you can cancel anytime. So please, 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 um, Get ready to do some work and be in the work with yourself and get excited for the brave work of leaping, surrendering, crying it out and creating a new space because we are going to move to a new consciousness on this planet and we're starting now. So I remember this group doing it. I'm doing a Calego. I remember you actually living it. I remember you reading through a few chapters this week, hopping on the call, totally open. And my biggest dare is make your connection to yourself priority. Schedule time to read each chapter and do the exercises. Make that first over something that isn't a 10 in your life. So Shauna, Virginia, Amanda, Colleen, Lisa, Jeanette, feel that I'm appreciative of all of you. Alia, love you guys so much.
Thank you for being in the work with me. Thank you for collaborating with me. What does our amazing supporter Mary Fast say? I remember the whole world shifted during book club. I remember that too, Mary. That's the loving space of Mary, not in a fight with the world, but in a space of love with the world. <sighs> love you guys so much. Love, love, love being with you guys. Thank you for being with me. Have a great week. Chapters one and two and the introduction and the foreword and check out the documentary and we'll talk about all of it next week.